Good old Pyro, so easy to clean up the enemy team. Just walk behind them and, and oh, 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 wrong game. We're talking about Deep Rock Galactic, but my point still stands. Flamethrowers are boring. Well, I mean, not exactly, but they're not exactly too fun either. I don't really find the concept of walking forward and moving your mouse left and right too engaging. Plus, I don't really like the alternative. The degrees, I, I mean, the cryo cannon just forces you to switch to your drills or your wave cooker after freezing an enemy, which you do by by holding mouse one and moving forward while while moving your mouse left to right. It's interesting for a, for a bit, but damn, I want to see something that's more blood pumping. Don't get me wrong, I see the appeal, but all this is close range WM1 and it just isn't my thing, you know? Plus, the flamethrower's more fun cousin, the cryo cannon, feels genuinely weak against bosses. I mean, seriously, the, the omen tower, dreadnoughts, every other boss in the game, come on, it is an uphill battle and not a fun time. So what am I to do? I really wish there was a weapon perfect for both area denial and single target damage, a primary that can be combined with the secondary to do something truly funny. I want to return to being a monkey and throw human waste at what dwarves and waste at enemies. Oh, oh wait, what's what's that? Is is that, oh crap, it's the corrosive sludge pump. The funniest, most mechanically complex, and most powerful weapon in the entire game. Out of the three primaries that Driller has in his arsenal, the sludge pump has got to be my favorite. See, while the flamethrower is super consistent and does insane damage and some of the cleanest, nicest overclocks in the entire game, it's stumped by its low survivability and time to kill. Unlike the M1000, you've got to slowly walk until the flame effect pops up, and then you can move your crosshair to another enemy. Then there's its complete opposite cousin, the cryo cannon. This gun completely freezes enemies, and when they're frozen, they take a 3 times damage boost, which gives you the ability to quickly switch to your drills to regenerate yourself, or pull out the Colette wave cooker and, and uh, <laughs> oh my god. Now, obviously, there are also overclocks that change this drastically, but generally, this is what it's all about. And while this is undoubtedly probably the best driller primary, it doesn't really suit my playstyle, and I get bored when I play it. I want to quickly mention that drillers are not known to be able to kill things quickly. Now, I must admit that the flamethrower does a lot of damage, at 11 damage per tick, but it's lack of range and its need to constantly reload makes it much worse at dealing damage than something like the minigun, not to mention the cryo cannon which only does a pitiful 6 damage. However, the sludge pump flips this on its head, doing a ridiculous 16 damage when tap fired and an ungodly 48 damage when charged up. This means that it does the third most amount of damage for a primary in the game just being beat out by a meat shot from the engineer and the M1000's charged shot. However, do you notice something? Both the NG's shotgun and the M1000 are specifically single target, while the sludge pump can do this. Oh, and by the way, you can get the pump to do 176 damage without any upgrades or puddles, which is way more than the M1000's 110, so it technically does the most damage per shot, but eh, whatever. Now, I must admit, when I first started playing, I was a cryo cannon main through and through. I mean, constantly being able to regenerate lost health, instantly killing dozens of frozen enemies with the Colette wave cooker, Ooh, it was clean and it felt good. However, I quickly noticed stuff like this would happen, and honestly, I just got bored of it. Seriously, playing cryo cannon for 80 hours gets boring. Meanwhile, if I brought a sludge pump into a boss fight, it would <laughs> it would do good. And compared to the flamethrower, it does significantly more burst damage and at a safer, more varied range, with much better ammo considerations. However, when I first started playing, I really disliked this weapon, which is something I understand. In total objective truth, the cryo cannon will always be the best driller weapon, because it does really good damage and has really good overclocks that allow for nice frost damage if you want to use it like a flamethrower. And it is an absolute champion when it comes to a team build. A 3 times damage buff for something is- it, it, it can't be beat em. But that doesn't mean that the goo gun isn't viable. But hey, I, I get that this word vomit isn't that entertaining, so let's enter the battlefield and examine three scenarios you'll find yourself in. As we land into the sand blasted corridors, you'll see these guys. These are lone grunts, sometimes in duos or trios. For those, you simply tap fire and delete them out of existence. It is as simple as that. No need to hold something down and wait for a bar to fill up. If you land a direct Direct hit, they simply stop existing. And oh, does it feel really damn good? You can even do it to Makeras, which is 
So, uh, let me tell you, it feels amazing. Then there's scenario two. Let's say a swarm has just started and, oh, uh oh, that's not good. It seems that we're about to experience an average Australian day. Now, if you were a CRISPR driller, you would have to shoot and hold down your left mouse button, draw your mouse in a circle and wait for everything to set on fire before you can finally turn back and continue your mission. But with the sludge pump, you simply have to hold down your left click and release. And it's very satisfying seeing a whole crowd, an army of bugs disappear and dissolve just like that. Seeing the big ball you shot out being fractured into smaller puddles that dissolve these enemies instantly. I like damage sources that are satisfying, mechanics that are snappy and dynamic, and nothing is more dynamic than some clean ass, well I guess dirty ass kills. However, it's not all super easy. You see, learning to hit your projectiles can be a learning process, but even more importantly is the thought process behind how to use a weapon. Here's when we move on to scenario. Scenario 3, a genuine swarm in game with Praetorians, Swarmers, and say you're also running low on ammo. There's nowhere for you to run and you only have a couple more shots left in you. What do you do? Well, you know that your puddles slow enemies down and also damages everything inside it except for you. So you'll look for the biggest crowd of enemies and shoot a charged shot into them. Wait for them to dissolve and then run into that puddle of safety. You then tap fire that Praetorian and flank behind it, shooting it with the Subata. You shoot one mag of Subata ammo and then BAM, he's dead and he also explodes, killing every everything around it. Then you're basically in safety. You have all these safe puddles that you can choose to stay in if you need to take a rest, or you can just simply finish every other enemy off with a single fire. And just like that, a swarm is done. Now, compared to if you had to face that with a flamethrower, it's it's not as it's not as fun. Now, some might argue that cryo cannon also has a similarly complex build. Oh my god, I can't pronounce that word correct. However, I would argue that isn't true. I, I have only played cryo for about 80 hours, but it, it doesn't seem right to me. See, when you're playing cryo, you only really choose from two things. Do you A, freeze them and run in with your Colette wave cooker, or two, freeze them and then running with your drills. These two options are basically the only two that you'll find, and sometimes you might pull out your impact axes and whatever and whatever, but most of the time it will revolve around those two. The game is much less dynamic and much, much less fluid. When you're playing the goo gun, it's less about executing two moves correctly and more about finding a combo on the spot and making that work. Plus, look at the design and the lore of this weapon. It's almost as deep and as beautiful and as sexy as the subscribe button. God, I'm so desperate. All right, so I need subs. Uh, please comment because the algorithm really, really likes that. I know it makes me very happy. And last time it did, the last time that happened, I, I made, I was very happy. Please comment sub. Yes. Uh, and, and anyways, uh, look at, look at this design. It's sleek. It's unique. I can't think of anything more dwarven than Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's a lie. Then creating a gun that literally slings corrosive shit. Plus, it gives you the ability to say some absolutely disgusting things to your friends. Now, to understand the gun, you have to take notes out of a couple things. Firstly, damage, which is self-explanatory. There are three types of damage. The uncharged, charged, and overtime damage, as well as puddle damage and fragmentation damage. Charged damage refers to the damage done by a charged shot. Anything that this big ball touches will do 48 damage. Damage, plus the damage of the puddle and the fragmentation damage. Yes, big balls will fragment into eight smaller fragments. Each of these fragments will expand the area of your puddle and yes, do four extra damage. And then there's also the normal damage, which is just the tap fire damage, you know, 16 damage, it's free damage, I said damage three times. And then the most important part of this gun, the damage over time, corrosive damage. Now, corrosive damage is really, really OP. Like ice and fire, this is where the driller does all of his damage. However, unlike ice and fire, it doesn't take five years to apply to an enemy. You simply have to land your shot and then bam, their entire health bar will be gone. But let me explain to you why it's so OP. See, this does a whopping eight damage every 0.2 seconds. And this effect lasts for four seconds. Yes, you heard me right. That is 32 DPS if you get a direct hit, which bumps up your total damage per shot to 176? Plus fragmentation damage and puddle damage? Uh, what the fuck? Oh right, puddle damage. See, these puddles don't do corrosive damage. Uh, that, would, that, that would be OP as fuck. However, they're by no means bad as they do a flat four damage every 0.3 seconds for a whopping 12 seconds. It also has the ability to slow down enemies to a crawl. And this, this is the support you bring to your team. Slowing these enemies in your puddles for 12 whole seconds is nuts and can easily make things much more reasonable to fight against, especially against big enemies like Praetorians. Plus, you can basically eliminate swarmers as a threat as well as shockers, like they can't get past you. 
but, but mediocrity. The NG can handle Swarmers better, Gunner's Auto Cannon can do better AoE, and, and there are better weapons for single target damage, and every other Gorilla primary is better for area defense. And, and to that, I have to say, uh, yeah. Uh, you're right. But I'm not always playing with a full team. Sometimes I like to play Deep Rock Galactic solo or with one or two friends who also don't want to fill strict roles. In situations where you don't have a fully coordinated team, this weapon reigns supreme. It's a super versatile gun and it's a jack of all trades, master of some. Plus, some of the goofy stuff this weapon leads to is it's incredible, as it is by far the silliest weapon in all of Deep Rock Galactic. The weapon's pros are in new you become an AoE god. You also get a salt, well, I mean, it's technically a liquid, single target option, as well as giving yourself the ability of range as a driller. You're able to create an impregnable base like the Engineer, which allow you to handle swarmers and shredders and shockers without any problem. However, we can't talk about Deep Rock Galactic without talking about the upgrade and also the overclocks. Tier 1 lets you choose faster projectiles, my go to, or bigger puddles. You, you don't need the extra ammo for this one, pr pr promise you. The second tier gives, gives you 24 extra charged shot damage, holy sh- You can also choose for your charged shot to get 4 extra fragmentations, and a solid 8 extra damage for your tap shot. All of these are, are really, really good, but, but like, I mean, no one can turn up 24 damage, right? The third tier gives you more tap damage, as well as much better puddle and DOT effects, and also more ammo. Now, the third ammo upgrade here is really good, but I really enjoy the damage over time buffs, and also the puddle buffs. So, uh, do with that what you will. All of the upgrades here are really good, and just choose what fits your playstyle the best. For tier 4, you can either use one less ammo for a charge shot, or reduce charge time by 60%. Yeah, this one's obvious. And, for tier 5, you can either make your puddle slowdown rate absolutely ridiculous, making it almost 50 times more, imp no 50% more impressive. You can also nearly double your damage over time and puddle damage, but overall both of these upgrades are insane and it really depends on two things, whether you want to have a lot of AoE control and slowdown support, or you want to do a ridiculous ridiculous amount of damage. Now for its clean overclocks, which I think uh, are pretty boring, but they're also really effective. The two clean overclocks either buff your direct hit damage or buff your projectile speed. Its balanced overclocks buffs area damage at the trade-off for damage over time, or you could also get a balanced overclock that gives you more fragmentation damage for less charged shot damage. Finally, the unstables go as follows. These two unstables are some of the most unique upgrades in the entire game and are super fun, but they completely change the playstyle of the weapon. One of them removes fragments entirely and copies the actings of the Goo Bomber, creating massive lines of goo, almost like how Sticky Flames can create lines of damage. This is incredible for locking down points in a square and is really, really fun to use. Then there's also the Sludge Blast, which at the trade-off of weakening your, your current moveset, gives you a a massive blast of sludge. Think of it kind of as the snowball for the cryo cannon. Absolutely ridiculous burst damage at the cost of consistent damage. I'm not sure if you if you want to make your burst damage even better and your consistent damage even worse, but I mean, I reckon it could be really fun. So let me quickly review everything and, and give you a quick little, little tie, as well as talk about some of the drawbacks of the weapon. You have two ways of just doing normal damage by clicking the left mouse button. You also can do damage over time and you can also do damage from your puddles. Two completely unique overclocks that completely change how you play the game, upgrades that allow you to focus on four separate parts of the sludge pumps and mechanics, an incomprehensible swag and drip, as well as just, you know, a really, really fun weapon. However, it's time to talk about the drawbacks. Number one, the cryo cannon. The simple existence of this gun makes any other driller primary worse. It's too consistent, does an unreasonable amount of damage if you're good enough, and its only weakness is boss fights. But with a good team, that's not even an afterthought of a problem of an afterthought of a problem. A three times damage boost is just too damn good. The ammo can be tough in high hazards as well. You eat five ammo per charged shot, and while I never struggle on ammo, my friends always complain about it. All I can say is that, once again, the cryo cannon outdoes this as well. It has the worst secondary compatibility because temperature shock isn't a thing on this weapon. The Subata's upgrade makes the enemies explode on death if they're already corroded, which does a lot of AoE damage, and while it can be super useful, especially 
on low ammo, when you have the ability to simply clear out a pi times 100 squared circle of death, it becomes pretty useless. As already mentioned, you're a jack of all trade, master of only area damage and, and burst damage to an extent. DRG's weapon balancing is very, very good, and while I have no doubt that it's better than the CRISPR, I cannot stress how solid the cryo cannon really is. However, even with that, it's still incredibly fun. I mean, seriously, look at this clip. Look at the smile on my face. I'm so happy right now because I saw one of you guys subscribe. If there's one thing I can say to sum up this weapon, it's more burst damage, less consistency. More versatility, less specification. And hey, just know that at the end of the day, I'm just a guy who makes DRG videos with less than 100 hours in the game. And someone who is very, very prone to making mistakes. So, so please, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching to the end. Don't worry, I'm working on the Ultra Kill Prime Soul video.